offering is the truth. If you had to put a name to the conspiracy that's come down to us through the ages, that some call the Illuminati, some other people call it other things, but I think if you boil it down to its purest, simplest form, you would identify it essentially as Freemasonry. Now that might surprise some of you, but understand that Masonry has been around a long, long time. It may not have always been called Freemasonry, but Masons itself brag about the fact that their first Mason was Tubal Cain. Now Tubal Cain, if you know your Bible, was the seventh man from Adam by way of Cain, and he was the guy that invented metalworking. And he is supposedly the first Mason. Now that's pretty far back to start a conspiracy. Then of course you have the flood. After the flood, the Masons say that the first Mason was Nimrod. Now of course we all know who Nimrod was. He's the guy that helped build the Tower of Babel. That's pretty good Masonry. He was the person who basically had the idea for a one world government. He wanted to start a United Nations. He had all these great ideas, you know, one world government, all this kind of stuff, new world order. And God had other ideas. And God came down and he cast confusion and, and changed the languages of the people. So they went and scattered abroad on the earth. That basically tells us what God thinks about the United Nations. This caused the conspiracy to go underground. And for centuries it existed in various forms. And if, if, you, if you look in the, the books, the literature of Masonry, you will find that Masonry says it is the direct linear descendant from the ancient mystery religions, from the ancient fertility cults. Now what does that mean? That sounds sort of exciting and mysterious and exotic. Well, the ancient fertility cults were cults that revolved around human and animal reproduction. I'm sorry to be blunt, but that's what they mean. It's Baal worship, essentially. If you study the worship of Baal in the Bible, you've got all these false gods like Molech and uh, Baal and Chemosh and some of these others. All of them, their rites involve sexuality. And that's the same thing that masonry is. That's why the god of masonry is the phallus. That's why you have Masonic monuments like the Washington Monument that look like a giant phallic symbol. It's that simple. Um, so this is the conspiracy. And it may have been called many names, like for example, before the time of Christ, masonry was called the Dionysian Artificers. Uh, later on, it was called the Gnostic. The Gnostics are basically people who believe that you are saved by secret knowledge, to put it simply. Gnosticism, it comes from the Greek word gnosis, which means knowledge, like diagnosis or prognosis. And what they believed is that Christianity, as it is constituted in the Bible, is far too simple. It's a Greek, it's a Greek heresy off of the truth of Christianity. And what it means is, is that you have to go through all sorts of elaborate rituals and details and deal with archons and aeons and logos and all these different things in order to receive salvation. Modern day Gnostics would be examples, for example, the Mormons, the Masons, a lot of New Agers, all these people believe they're saved by acquiring some sort of arcane, hidden wisdom. Then we've got pre-Islamic sorcery and alchemy, but that in turn birthed what is called the assassin cult. Now, some of you may have heard of this. There was a group that came out of Orthodox Islam that was called the Ishmaelians. It was like a splinter group. And these Ishmaelians were a small but powerful heresy. And one of their chief leaders was a sheikh by the name of Hassan e Sabah. And this guy led a group that was called the Hashishin. That's where we get our word, assassin is from the Arabic word hashishin. Now why were they called hashishin? Because the word means eaters of hashish. What, how this guy worked, he, was the, he is kind of the father of the modern day conspiracy. He was the father of modern day espionage. And he was the first programmer, the first mind control operator. And this is what he did. If someone wanted to join his group, he knew he needed elite warriors because he had all of Islam arrayed against him. When you died, you would go to a place called paradise, where you could do all the stuff you weren't allowed to do as a Muslim. You could eat pork, you could drink wine, and there were these beautiful angels called Uris that looked just like Playboy centerfolds, and they would minister to your every whim throughout eternity. And this is the Islamic paradise. Now, 
what Hassan would do with one of these recruits because he needed someone who was just a fanatic. And what he would do is he would bring this person in and feed them a sumptuous meal. And the meal would be laced with copious amounts of hashish. In other words, he'd get the guy really stoned. I mean, we're talking seriously stoned here. And then he would take him into a secret garden in the heart of his castle, and there would be beautiful women, all the pork he could eat, all the wine he could drink, and for three or four hours, the guy would just really enjoy himself. And then he would bring him back when he started coming down off the trip. And he would sit him in the chair, and he would say, I have taken you to paradise. I have that power. If you serve me in jihad and die in my service, you will go straight to paradise for all eternity. What do you think the guy said? And these guys were total fanatics. I mean, they, he was famous for doing things like he'd have 10 of them line up on a wall, he'd snap his fingers and they'd jump in unison a thousand feet to their deaths, grinning all the way. And those have become some of the bywords of the Illuminati that he had such a profound influence on. Okay, moving along, what happened next is the royal secret of masonry passed from the assassins to the Templars. Now, the Knights Templar were warrior knights. They were Catholics that took part in the Crusades that you've probably all heard about. They went over to the Holy Land to try and capture the Holy Land back from the Saracens. Now, the Saracens were a kind of Muslims. During this conflict, which lasted over a century, they began to interface with the um, assassins. They began to share each other's secrets. And so when they lost the Crusades, the Templars went back to Europe, immensely wealthy, immensely powerful, and full of occult knowledge. Now you gotta understand something about the Templars. They, they got very wealthy because they basically provided protection for the pilgrims as they journeyed from Europe to visit the sacred places in the Holy Land. And they got very, very wealthy. Plus, there are legends that say that they found Solomon's treasure buried in the ruins of Solomon's temple in Jerusalem. And that they were fabulously wealthy. They got so powerful. And interestingly enough, they became the first international banksters. Everybody tries to blame the Jews for that one. But actually, the first international banksters were, in fact, the, the Templars. And um, they got so powerful and so wealthy they threatened the Vatican, which was not a wise thing to do. So the Pope got together with the King of France, and they conspired to bring down the Templars. In 1307, on October 13th, Friday, they sent out warrants and captured every Knight Templar that they could find, including the Grand Master, whose name was Jacques de Molay. Uh, the next thing is, about 100 years later, along came the Rosicrucians. They had the same secret. Some people say that they were just a, a resurfacing of the Knights Templar under a different name. After that, just 34 years later, we have Ignatius Loyola and the Jesuits. Now, Ignatius Loyola was a Spanish knight, and he got hit in the leg with a cannonball and had to go through a lengthy convalescence. During that time, he had some sort of conversion experience and decided, this sounds familiar, I know, he wanted to start an order of warrior monks elite warriors that would protect the Pope and would serve the Catholic Church unwaveringly. He came up with a name for this order. He called it Los Ilumbrados. Now, if any of you speak Spanish, you know that name means the Illuminated Ones. However, the Pope didn't like that name, and so they changed the name to the Society of Jesus. This finally congealed formally into what is called the Mother Lodge in England in 1717. In London, at the Apple Tree Tavern, nice spiritual place, the first meeting formally of the Grand Lodge of England took place. And because most all modern masonry comes from that place, this is called the Mother Lodge. The next thing that happened is that the Grand Orient came along about 60 years later. That's the most virulent, anti-Christian form of masonry that exists in the world today. Just a few years after that, on May 1st, which is a high satanic holiday, a gentleman by the name of Adam Wieshaupt started a group called the Illuminati Orden, or the Order of the Illuminati. This is really the modern origin of the conspiracy.